Hello everyone, welcome to this video entitled Tips and Tricks number 15 Low-pass LC filter design Recently we talked about this converter the current FET parallel resonant push-pull DC-DC converter You can get more information about it in this video Power Electronics number 93 And after posting this video I got a question related to how to calculate the low pass LC filter that we have here at the output of the converter. So today in this short video we are going to see how to calculate this inductor and this capacitor. I want to thank our industry medicinas Frenetic. If you want to try their software for free you can do so by using the link provided in the description of this video. Basically there are two methods that we can use to do the design of this low pass filter. The first method is the time based filter design and then we can also do the filter design using a frequency based methodology. I think that the first method based on time design is more accurate so this is the one that we are going to see today so here below we have the equivalent circuit that we have at the output of our converter the rectifier can be modeled as a voltage source a full wave rectified voltage source then we have the inductor the capacitor and the load. So this is the waveform that we have for the rectified voltage where T is the switching period of the converter and our goal is to calculate the values of the inductor and the capacitor. Let's start by the calculation of the inductance. The first step is to approximate the rectified voltage by its average value and the first harmonic that we are showing here. The amplitude of the first harmonic is four times the peak value of the rectified voltage divided by 3 pi. Then assuming that we have negligible output voltage ripple, we can say that approximately this voltage is going to be applied across the inductor. So with this we can calculate the flux linkage that we have in the inductor. For this we have this equation which is the Faraday's equation. This is the expression of the voltage that we have across the inductor. So we can finally calculate the flux linkage. Now considering the definition of inductance which is the flux linkage over the inductor current for sinusoidal operation we can obtain the inductance as the ratio of the amplitude of the flux linkage over the amplitude of the current through the inductor so substituting the value before we get this equation and from it we can get this other using the natural frequency and substituting the value of V sub P, we get finally this expression for the value of the inductance, where I sub M is the peak value of the current ripple in the inductor. For example, if we have a value of the rectified voltage, the peak value equal to 100 volts, the switching frequency is 100 kilohertz, and we want to have a peak current ripple of 3.3 amperes, then we only have to substitute and we get this value of the inductance approximately 10 microhenries. To calculate the value of the capacitance, we go back to our equivalent circuit. So we can see that through the inductor we have the average current I sub zero which is the current also through the output we have an AC current superposed 
to the DC current of the inductor and this AC current we can assume that is going to approximately circulate through the capacitor. This is going to generate an AC voltage ripple that is going to appear here at the output superposed to the DC output voltage. So now it's really easy. This AC current circulating through the capacitor is going to create a peak voltage that can be calculated multiplying the reactance of the capacitor times the AC current. So we only have to substitute the values and we get this final expression for the output voltage ripple. And from it we can calculate the necessary value of the capacitance. For example, for our case before, in which the AC component of the current is 3.3 amperes peak value, and if we want an output voltage ripple of 0 0.27 volts, for example, then we substitute and we get this value of 9.7 microfarads. Here we have a simple circuit to verify our design. This is the voltage source, which is the voltage across the resonant tank. Here we have the rectifier, the filter and the load. So the voltage at this point is this one. Then we have the current through the inductor and the output voltage. Here we have done the measurement of the DC output voltage, which is 63.6 and then we can verify the values of the ripples on these waveforms obtained from the simulation. So for example we go to this one and pressing control and right click we can calculate the peak to peak value that we have for the ripple and we get 6.6 .6 amperes so it's very similar to the value that we have calculated. And also for the output voltage, we can do the calculation of the peak to peak value and we get 0 0.55 volts, which is also very similar to the value of our design. Well, with this, we finish this presentation today. I hope that you find this information useful. Please let me know if you have any comment or question. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.